Hi, I'm James the Box Office Artist and welcome to a brand new episode of Ask the Artist and this time there is no interview. This time uh, you are interviewing me and I am going to answer all of your questions. So if you have left a question on any of my previous videos, this is your my opportunity to answer you. As you guys know, I'm a pretty busy guy. <laughs> my schedule is pretty packed, so and I apologize for if you left a comment on my video. You know, I do read them. I do read all the comments. I don't always reply right away, and sometimes I don't reply at all just because of a time factor. Though I would love to reply to each and every one of you, and I do thank each and every one of you for all of your great comments and replies, and uh, they are fantastic. So, so please keep doing that so this is my opportunity to try to answer as many questions as I possibly can on all the comments that you've left on my previous videos so hopefully you will see your question in this particular segment now I think right off the bat the number one question I keep getting is what material I am using what pens do I use in particular so I'll tell you guys what what I will do is make an official art materials uh, video. Now I do have one from before from a previous SE artist, the art materials I use when I draw and uh, I'll probably link it up uh, up here. So if you haven't seen that already, please hit that link. But I will make a brand new one because what I don't cover in there is, uh, for example, the rulers I use, uh, the programs I use, um, the programs I specifically use for my artwork. So I will make another one, another official one. Uh, that I will link up so anyone who's new to my channel because I've had quite a few subs in the past uh, few months So some of you have not seen that video. So if you haven't seen that video check that out and uh, when I, Once that brand new video comes out and a new sub comes along and asks me that question I'll probably just link up that video or maybe one of you great fans could put the link for that particular video So they can see that right away, but you know what? Let's get into the questions. First comment is from Never Forget, and his question is, do you have any plans for the films that are coming out after Rogue One, like episode eight and nine? The answer is yes. Um, we'll see how it is received. Well, I'll know better in the next maybe six months, once the piece is a little bit further along, whether uh, I will add on eight and nine, but the way I'm designing right now, it is to add on eight and nine. Also asking is Jacob Carana, Will you also include Star Wars characters from Rebels or Clone Wars, or are you focusing only on the movies? Well, Jacob, as of now, I probably will not. I'm just pretty much uh, sticking to the movies, mainly also because of um, the style factor, because uh, those two pretty much have a distinct uh, 3D animation style. So as cool as it would be to include that in this piece, Probably not because I don't think it will fit the exact style. Now with the Han Solo movie, the other spin-offs, uh, we'll see. Like I'm still trying to design it so maybe I could separate uh, the pieces in between. So I could insert uh, whatever, uh, you know, extra Star Wars story or, you know, standalone movies like the Han Solo movie, if they're still going to do the Boba Fett movie, because uh, that would be in between Rogue One and Episode uh, 4, right? So we will see how that goes. But I'll make that decision later on. First things first, got to get the piece done. So these next questions are coming from the Mark Crilly video, uh, where I did my 10 minute, 1 minute, and that... Uh, 10 second challenge and first of all I want to thank you for the great feedback I've had for that particular video I've had a ton of views for that and the chat you know it seems like you guys like challenges so I'm gonna make that a weekly thing I'm gonna try a different challenge every week because they honestly they are a lot of fun and I got a bunch a bunch of great questions so here's the first question from slow tip uh, is there any particular reason why you're doing the majority of your work in black and white is a stylistic choice also when you do black and white drawings do you make all shadows black and all lights white, or you make exceptions to explain the form better. Pretty much, you know, I come from a comic book background. Uh, so uh, I was a penciler at Marvel, uh, Marvel DC, Image Comics, so I was a freelance uh, comic book artist for about six years. So I was trained to work in black and white uh, for the most part. So that's why even today, like all my drawings are black and white. Now, like you guys know, I work in film, so I do know how to, I'm, a, I'm a pretty much an expert at Photoshop too. Uh, in that sense. Now, um, when I do color my things, for the most part, it is in Photoshop. So if you look back at my, uh, I haven't had a lot of colored videos recently, but if you do go back at my channel, you will see a lot of colored artwork. But I will let you guys know, I will start toying with Copics 
in the new year. I'll uh, bite the bullet, go and spend the $400 and buy some Copic markers. I'm hoping there will be some uh, Boxing Day. We have Boxing Day here in Canada, like your Black Friday in the US. I will see if I can get a sale, but for the most part, I will start playing around with Copics, more for my own sake because they are pretty cool. So I would like to learn how to do them. Maybe I'll take a look at my buddy Jazz's channel to learn how to do them. So in the new year, look out for that. I'm going to struggle to try to learn them along with you guys, okay? But for the most part, the rest of my computer coloring, or less really coloring, is all on the computer. So I do do a lot of computer coloring as well, and hopefully you will see that in the future. So I hope that helps, okay? Um, in terms of black and white, it's just a style I'm comfortable in, you know, pretty much it's my comic book uh, artist training. Okay, so that's why I do a lot of black and white. The next question comes from my Star Wars Episode 3 video, and this comes from Drew Bo Sol Soleil. Soleil. Bo Soleil. I gotta butcher your name. Please, I apologize, Drew, but thank you so much for the question. Here is the question James, great video. I think these are my favorite. I know how much of the work it takes to produce a video like this. Keep it up. I can't wait to watch the progress on the Star Wars project and more videos soon. Thank you so much, Drew. These Star Wars video, these ones pretty much take me the most times in terms of editing. Uh, the, the Star Wars videos, they take anywhere between five, six hours to actually edit. Five, six, seven hours to actually edit. Uh, for the most part, the drawing videos, they are pretty simple itself. It's just uh, for the drawing videos, to edit those, they only take between half an hour to an hour to put together, in all honesty. It's just, I rely on all the camera work. <laughs> the longest part is the actual drawing itself, not the actual editing. But thank you for noticing how long those take to put together. That's why I actually love all the Star Wars videos, no matter how many views they get, because they take a lot of the editing uh, into play. So thank you for noticing that. The next question is from PJ May, and I want to thank PJ because he's been a long time subscriber of mine. Uh, he says, uh, I know you get this a lot, but I'm really struggling to gain any traction on my YouTube channel. I stick to the schedule and people are looking at my content on other social platforms, but YouTube is the real struggle. Just wondering what you recommend I do. Now, I did answer this comment, but I thought it was something that everyone could benefit from. So, uh, in terms of YouTube, like, of course, I'm not the greatest uh, guy to talk about YouTube yet. Uh, my, I have gotten a lot of traction in the past couple months. Thank you to my buddy Jazza, so Jazza would probably be better to answer this than me. But my own personal advice to you, if you are just starting out on YouTube, the real game is patience. Patience. All of this takes time, no matter what your skill level in art is, okay? Uh, because for the most part, all these drawing videos, it's very uh, a niche market, to, per se. And I'm finding, like, unless you do something really out there and wacky that the normal guy would love to see, for the most part, people don't really like watching art videos unless they are into art itself, unless they're really, like, for example, into comic books and all that. So it takes a while to build an audience to find people who really like these type of videos. Like all of you who are subbed to me, like you like these type of videos. Like unless you do the, those really, really, really realistic celebrity videos, like those gain a lot of traction because people like that kind of thing. But for those who do like comic book style or depending on the style, it takes a long time. I suggest for you, if you guys are just starting out your YouTube channel, start slowly. Start slowly. Don't expect subscribers right away. Just concentrate on making the best possible content you can at the most consistent you can. Okay? And I wouldn't even uh, go, you know, beg people to come look at you yet. Like, do, you, do your social media. Put it up on all social media. Don't be lazy that way. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Um, you know, Twitter, whatever social media you can to get some eyeballs on this thing, but then go for it. And then, but also, don't look at the views, don't constantly look at your views, uh, refreshing the views every two minutes. Like, oh, oh did I get a new subscriber? Did don't, don't even worry about that at this point. Worry, focus your time, energy, making the best possible content you can. And at the end of the day, the subscribers will come if your content is good. Now, if you've just say you were at it for just say a year give it give it that much time even like a year okay if you want maybe six months to a year six months to a year and you notice you haven't gained any new subs <laughs> in six months you know something's wrong with your content okay as much as we love our work uh, maybe the content isn't something people like as Gary Vaynerchuk would say the market is the market people like what they like and there's nothing we can do to change their mind so uh, that's when you would reevaluate. Maybe I should change my videos around a bit, or maybe I'm doing something that people aren't liking, and then you adjust. But give it time. 
give it time. It takes time. I've been at this so far for about, um, consistently, I'd say about two years right now. I'm coming upon the two years mark. Like, I've been starting, I started this channel back um, in around 2013. Really, I did it for about six months. I stopped for a while, and then I started again early last year. And uh, the traction, I gained about, okay, because I had about a thousand before I went back in, right? A little bit less than a thousand, maybe around eight, 700, 800 before I went back in subscribers. So, it takes time. Patience is the game, my friend. Patience is the game. Good luck to you or any one of you who decides to start a YouTube channel. Okay, from my how to draw the flash video, I had some wonderful questions that came from that, so I'm gonna answer a few of those. All Right Movies asks, do you use reference photos while drawing these? Absolutely. Uh, as you know, I have a monitor up there, especially, mostly when it comes to details. Like, for example, to costume details. If I'm drawing a vehicle, vehicle details. Not necessarily what I'm actually drawing, like the poses and stuff, like because I've, you know, I've seen everything. I've seen every pose at this point, so I got like this memory bank of stuff. Uh, sometimes if I do want, need some inspiration, sometimes I will, for, for example, if I'm going to draw uh, like uh, the Hulk, sometimes I will Google Hulk, just quickly scroll through just to see, you know, just to get my memory fresh. But usually when it comes to posing stuff, I'll just make it up on the spot, but I get the references more when it comes to actual details, costume details. So when I was looking, drawing the Flash, I actually had images of, um, of the CW Flash up, uh, Injustice Flash, of uh, Flashpoint Flash, all, all those different flashes. So mostly for details, not exactly what I'm drawing. Okay, this question comes from RR Angel 84 and the question is, this looks cool. Question as an artist, do you use reference when drawing guns? Pistols, shotguns, space weapons, etc. Or do you have the structure in your mind? And the answer is kind of both. Okay, whenever I'm drawing a gun, first of all, I, I pretty much have an idea what the gun is already. Okay, so if it's a real gun, I'll know already how I want the guy to hold it because that's very important. How the uh, character holds the gun and how the gun works. How does it shoot? Okay? Can it shoot? So the gun has to look like it works for sure. All right? Now, I'll let you guys know uh, you have to get as realistic as you can when it comes to real guns. There are people out there, okay, depending on how, uh, say, famous or popular you get as an artist, there are people out there who do criticize guns. When I was working on Splinter Cell Blacklist, there were groups, all they do is analyze the guns. The guns, the use of that film, have to be pinpoint accurate even when, you know, we are designing them, even though they could be brand new guns. There are, you know, parts of guns, the parts of the guns that we designed it with, they had to be real, they had to be functional. Okay, and uh, you know, they have to actually look like they would actually work in the real world. So no matter if it was a space weapon or like something even like an abstract weapon, they have to look like they actually work. That's why I always have a ton of gun references uh, whenever I'm drawing guns. Also, um, and again, they have to look like they functionally work. So the answer is yes, I look at a ton of reference whenever I'm drawing guns. From George Gamcree Lidzi. <laughs> I apologize if I, if I pronounce it wrong. Can you do a tutorial on how to edit a drawing in Photoshop, how to scan properly? Because when I scan, my blacks are more of a dark gray than black. So George, uh, first, first of all, let's get to the how to actually edit the drawing in Photoshop. Pretty much, uh, once I get the scan, uh, I play with the levels, okay? And that's, that's the most important thing. The levels is what gets me uh, what I want. First of all, I'll change the thing completely into grayscale. So all of these image uh, editing, uh, you go into Photoshop, you go to um, Image, and then you go to Adjustments. The two there I use is Hue Saturation and Levels. Okay, so first I would go to the Hue Saturation, turn the saturation completely down. Second, I would go back there and I would choose the Levels. The shortcut is Control L for Levels. And what I would do is play with the middle part, okay? Play with uh, the blacks and the, and the white, move that up and down. Okay, to get the blacks as black as possible and then the whites as white as possible. Now again, this is another reason why I use blue line, is because it's really, really easy to adjust and get rid of that blue line just by using the levels. Now if you have a literally dark pencil, if you have a lot of artifacting going around, this is the best way to try to get rid of most of that. It probably won't be 100%. Then you would go in with a, with a white paintbrush and just try to paint the rest out. But that's what I would do to get the image completely black and white. Now, if you guys want to know how to scan it, because some of you are asking me, how do I scan these pieces? For example, the Voltron piece is gigantic. 
It is huge and it's even bigger than my, I use an 8 and a half by 11 inch scanner, okay? I don't have a massive scanner at all. That piece is 25 inches by 17 inches, okay? Actually, no, uh, if I'm not mistaken, actually, it's 25 inches by, it's 28 inches by 17 inches. So that thing is huge. So how do I scan it in? Well, first of all, I take the entire piece and I try to, uh, I scan it in pretty much like 12, 13 times each section. Each section of it, I scan in 12, 13 times, okay? Okay, so I try to get every single piece in there, okay? And once that's in, now back in the day, back when I was uh, working, uh, I didn't know this particular trick. So I tried to take each one in Photoshop, try to line it up, try to blend it together. It took at least two hours to try to put these pieces together until a buddy of mine showed me the special tip in Photoshop. And let me bring you through that. Once you have everything scanned in, you go to File, you go to Automate, and you go to something called Photo Merge. Photo Merge, okay? Keep everything on Auto because what you want the, the images to do to, is to kind of warp so that they would all fit together, okay? You go to Browse, and you load every single scan that you, uh, that you did, okay? Every single scan that you did. And then once everything is loaded, hit OK. And through the magic of Photoshop, boop! everything comes together okay some of you might not know that that is a lifesaver so you don't have to go out buy 11 by 17 scanner you can just buy an eight and a half by 11 scanner and it should work pretty well okay now it will distort some things okay it might distort some things so you might have to do some adjustments so maybe if you did want to get 11 by 17 scanner at the very least it's flat you don't have to do any more adjusting but for the most part, if you just have an 8.5 by 11 scanner, this is the way to go. Thank you so much for all the wonderful questions. So again, if you guys have any other questions, leave it on any one of my videos. I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can. And uh, what I'll do is I'll try to put a link uh, down in the description below uh, for links to all the specific questions so you don't have to like scroll through to see if I answer your questions. You can take the look down below and see all the questions that I actually answer so you could go straight to that particular part of the video. First off, thank you so much to my buddy the Z-Man for editing this video. Uh, this was a tough one to edit, so thank you so much my friend. Uh, he will be editing all of these question and answer videos, uh, but I'm the one choosing the questions, so if your question isn't chosen, blame me, okay? <laughs> but thank you my buddy for the great edit, and thank you all for the wonderful questions. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button down below, or if the end credits is up please hit it over here please check out any one of my videos i would really appreciate that please follow me on social media twitter snapchat instagram at box office artist facebook.com slash the box office artist twitch.tv slash box office artist and my name is james i'm the box office artist and i'm here to say keep drawing and i'll see all of you guys next time